The U.S. scientist Dixon Despomier is seen as the inventor of vertical farming, food production vertically. Here in the highest building in Austria, two architects, well known in the international scene of vertical farming, describe to us their vision of feeding the world population in 2050. We're here in an office tower, not generally intended to be a vertical farm, but think about how much unused capacity we have throughout our cities. If we look at the so-called grey energy buildings already built but not used to full capacity, there's an unbelievable potential to produce food in a controlled environment. This is only one side of the picture. The other is unbelievably fascinating. To imagine how many tons of food one of these buildings could produce in a vertical farm every day. The need of food for the population of Vienna alone is such that we would have to use a third of the size of Austria to produce it. To feed everyone in London, it would take the size of all of Sweden. A building like the DC Tower in Vienna could, according to a NASA study, deliver the lion's share of produce for about 600,000 people. That translates into 35% of the population of Vienna. With that, transport and waste of fertilizer would be eliminated, and the produce would be fresh all year round. For structural engineering reasons, only soil-free growing techniques are used in vertical farms. The technologies to be used in vertical farming are already available. If we look at hydroculture, it's been around for hundreds of years, actually thousands of years. Like in a hypermodern, just outside of Vienna. The technology we find here is used for 90% of the vegetable production in Europe. It is a technology that allows that the growing medium is only changed once a year. The plants get all their nutrients in liquid form. In addition to this, the plants get all the fertilizer they need with every millimeter of water. Not only the full range of fertilizer, but every detail of every single nutrient exactly controlled. This ensures that there is not ever a deficiency or overfeeding. Besides all the technology we have installed here, we absolutely can't do without Mother Nature. Here we see a bumblebee box. The bumblebees are responsible for the fertilization of the flowers. We place them here in the greenhouse, so we ensure optimum fertilization even during the winter months when there are no insects outside. Only a well-fertilized flower will become a good fruit. A tomato plant needs lots of natural light, but there are other vegetable species that need less light. Lettuce, for example, can be grown with artificial light in a place like a vertical landscape. They can be produced in layers, so layer one, two and three for the very small young plants, then the bigger ones, and on the top, the mature plants. About 130 trucks weighing 40 tons each roll into Tokyo every day to deliver the daily supply of rice. To grow the rice needed, this metropolis needs more than twice the city area. A team of researchers from the University of Stuttgart is trying to find an innovative method for rice production. This building is designed for production with a conveyor belt on every floor. The rice plant is inserted here and then, over a period of 120 days of growing time, the conveyor belt moves it to the other side and drops it off here. Then the plants practically hang off this belt with the roots below in the dark room. The roots touch neither a growing medium nor a water container. They hang freely in the air gets sprayed by a fine fog that contains water and all the nutrients the plants need. On the top, 
In the light, the plant grows, the biomass is produced. The light ensures that photosynthesis can happen. The main point is the efficient transformation of electrical energy into biomass. Important are the right spectrum colors. With these aeroponics, we certainly need extra lighting. A very good option are LEDs, light-emitting diodes. They produce light for very low cost. With these LEDs, one has to be very careful. To get the right light the plant needs to produce chlorophyll, there has to be a maximum spectrum in the blue and red range. These LEDs make it possible to produce low-cost light and in a very precise wavelength. Since there are no seasons in the greenhouse, many plants can be harvested three to four times a year. If we want to win space, we need to choose plants that take up a lot of area outside. Rice takes up a large area and is the basic food for about 3 billion people, and that number is growing. There are many reasons that we have to switch to a way of growing that also has ecological value. The ecological value in this is that we save growing area and reduce water consumption. In our closed circuit, we also need less nutrients. A perfect circulatory system can be made reality in an aquaponic system. Here we combine fish farming with hydroponic vegetable farming in a closed water circulation system. The plants get all their nutrients from the wastewater of the fish farm. In the process, the water gets cleaned. Some fish species optimize the system by living entirely off the plant waste. The 25 degree warm water is perfect for plant growth. If you look at these plants, you can see that the roots are in the nutrient solution where they absorb nitrates. These nutrients come from changing the ammonia in fish feces into nitrites and then nitrates. Aquaponics is environmentally friendly in every way. This system works without any soil or fertilizers and has a very low CO2 emission. Bio we are not allowed to call our products bioproducts, even though we do not use any chemicals. The law defines that a bioproduct needs to have its roots in soil. This system would be ideal for a large family. Last summer, we produced, besides basil and tomatoes, over 130 kilograms of cucumbers. The wish for a garden is as old as mankind. In cities, however, Gardens were always more of a luxury. But soon we will have to use those city gardens to produce our food. In Wien, bis in 17 percent the Stadt Fläche. In Vienna, we use about 17% of city property for farming. Not that little if you think about it. But those areas are in a constant battle with other city uses such as housing and roads. To lessen this conflict, there have always been efforts to find production methods that use less land. The Rottner term is a well-known example of this. It was developed by engineer Rutner for the Vienna Garden Show in 1964. Visitors were able to marvel at a garden of only 50 square meters, but in a tower 42 meters high. This tower was seen as a bizarre project, but today many agricultural experts, city planners and architects support vertical farming. The need is amazingly big. In the late 90s, Dixon Despommier saw this by doing a simple calculation. Can we feed all of New York by planting all the flat roofs in the city? 
The results showed it was by far not enough. This is when the idea was born. Today, the need is even greater. The advantages are clear. The big challenge is to properly integrate this type of building. It would be a mistake to put something like this at the edge of a city. As soon as the city grows, it would have to be integrated. Therefore, it would be much more interesting to integrate it into the city, maybe in an existing city square. A good example would be in the middle of Vienna. Here it could be interwoven with a real market on the ground floor. Daniel Podmersig and Lukas Kulnig are in the process of developing a vertical farm for Vienna. There is also the idea of a vertical farm as an addition to an existing building. There are serious thoughts about having it at a firewall by an unused parking area in Nashmarkt, especially because there's already a market. It would be the right place for a prototype. In other areas, plans are already becoming reality. We just returned from Linköping from the Urban Agriculture Summit. This is a town of 150,000 inhabitants, about two hours train ride from Stockholm. There the first vertical farm is under construction right now. Other projects are being built in Dubai, South Korea and Shanghai. I estimate by 2030 we'll have at least 20 vertical farms. There's a large number fully planned and ready to be built, like the ones in Sweden at the moment. High cost, however, is still a handicap. The cost at this time for the conversion of a regular building to a vertical farm is about 2,200 euros per square meter. This would bring the cost of our example of the DC Towers to 140 million euros, an enormous sum that would make the vegetables grown in this setting quite expensive. However, natural oil, water and land will be in short supply at some point in time. The future of farming could really move upward.